Hey trappers, glad to have you back here in my shed. A friend of mine asked me to do a video on adjust the adjustments in, that I do um, and how I treat uh, Duke 110 traps. And what I do here works for both the regular Duke 110 and also the Duke 110 Magnum. Uh, this here it happens to be a Magnum. Try to show you here uh, an issue that I have with these and how I went about fixing the problem. When the dog is engaged in the trigger when the trap is set, there's a lot of pressure on this side of that notch, all right? So when the triggers are pushed that way, the trap goes off with not a whole lot of trigger movement. But I have found, um, now this trap isn't, isn't too bad, but I have found that some of them, when, when the trigger is moved inwards, because they're, all the pressure is on this side of the dog, there's really none on that side of the dog. And the issue here is the notch in the dog is a bit too wide. And this, the side of the trigger that is supposed to hit the bottom of the dog right there actually slides up into the notch. And you can get very, very, very far, or there it went, but a lot of times you can get very, very um, long travel on a, on a body grip trigger on, on some of these Duke 110s when the trigger is pushed inwards. Like I said, Outwards is no problem because all the pressure is there. That, that side of that trigger cannot slide up into the notch because it's tied against. But inward, when the trigger swings inward, um, that's where you can have the issue of really far travel of your trigger before your trap goes off. Um, and I'm gonna show you how, how I take care of that problem and talk a little bit um, how I treat and deal with these Duke, Duke 110s. I, I like them a lot. They're, they're a good little chap trap. Very affordable, very economical, good spring strength. Um, they're a good investment. And every trap has the little nuances that you're gonna have to work around. But uh, this is a real easy fix for these. Stay tuned. Okay, first off, you need to decide um, which side of the trigger you have to work on. If you remember, like I said, um, when the trigger swings outward, it's not a problem. It's only when the trigger swings inward. Um, so if you think about it, uh, the way the scissors action works on a body grip trap, um, the inside side of the trigger when a trap is set would be on the outside when the trap is snapped. But if you're not sure, just, just check it. Make sure that you're working on the inside of the trigger. You don't have to do anything to the outside. And I just take a small nail and slide it between the bar, that's the trap, and uh, in between the bar and the trigger. And just hammer on it a couple times. And what that does is it'll It'll widen that notch in that trigger ever so slightly, and it will allow it will it, it will push it out far enough that it'll catch that dog every time. That that little bit too wide of notch in the dog is not an issue now because that's pushed out a little bit. And that little nub that hammering that nail in there creates will catch the underside of that dog every time. Um, it's, really, it's really all you need to do on these Duke 110s and 110 Magnums um, to fix that long trigger problem. The last thing I want to talk to you here about is how I treat these Duke 110s. Um, and I have 
dry trail mink sets in mind when I'm doing this. Um, that's why I want to make sure that trigger goes off with not a whole lot of travel when it's pushed inward. I, I, but something else I do to these duke traps is I wax them. And I know wax is a cardinal sin on a body grip trap, but take my word for it. Um, once these dukes are a little bit rusty and you wax them, um, you're going to be really happy with how they perform. I, I, I don't feel that they're too touchy at all. Um, what the wax will do for you, now this is actually a Duke 110 um, standard, not the Magnum, but if you wax these, if you do that little trigger modification that I showed and you wax these traps, you're going to have a four-way trigger. When there's side pressure on that trigger, either way, it goes off. And obviously, front and back, it's going to go off real nice and easy. Perfect um, to set those dry, dry trails for mink. And really, all I do is I take this squirt bottle, which is, I don't know, 24 ounces or whatever. Uh, I put a tablespoon or two of, of table salt in it, vinegar. Uh, maybe half vinegar and fill it up with water. I didn't actually put any water in this yet. This is straight vinegar. Um, you can use straight vinegar, but if you add some water, it stretches your vinegar a little bit. And I lay these, I lay my traps out in the grass and I, I spray them down um, with the vinegar solution. Maybe spray them down a couple times um, and then hit them with a real nice mist spray of the garden hose about every day. Uh, if you have, you know, live in a more humid area, you have a dew forming every morning that helps to rust them but just get a decent coat of rust on them um, and wax them like i said do your trigger mod get your traps good and rusty and dip them just dip them in trap wax and you know that they're they're pretty pretty safe you know I, i've never had a problem with these dukes going off prematurely because they're waxed and you, you have the benefit of more or less that four-way trigger you have uh your trigger will go off if a mink goes through and hits it hits it with side pressure. Um, so thanks for watching. Uh, like I said, these dukes are, are great little body grip traps. Give some a try. Um, try waxing them. I mean, use them or else just rust them prematurely and um, wax them and, you know, let me know what you think because I, I, just, I just think these wax dukes are, are wonderful. Um, so thanks again for watching. Please hit the subscribe button. And until next time, have a good one.